Any, anyway, uh, the um, um, any, anyway, uh, the um, the concept in the Gospels of the kingdom of heaven is is near the kingdom of near Jesus concept and that spiritual thing it is just not it is not accepted um and of course it was never was never emphasized in christian theology so um but anyway we've talked about it enough that now i think it's time um at least at least i want to know how much we're hitting home here with these things and so i said okay well let let let's go to heaven now and maybe this will you know bring on more understanding of that concept and um and then we will really get into how we're going to practice these things today in our world where are we and so i'll be looking for people to share starting next week okay so I, i'm just going to go through a little few basics here because we are going to be talking about practicing the teachings um but the the inspiration for practicing these teachings uh rests on an understanding of what you know what is heaven and what is God because that can that can inspire um your wanting to do these teachings and so what is heaven okay traditionally all right this is the traditional all right heaven traditionally is a place where the good go after they die as opposed to okay i'm going to stop for just a minute here and if i start acting like a crazy person please forgive me and ignore it but i have this little gnat that's flying around here and i absolutely cannot get him so i'm going to try not to do it but um <laughs> but um excuse me anyway okay so Heaven is a place where the good go after they die, as opposed to hell, where you go if you are not good. All right, that's our that's our traditional Christian. Okay, and but heaven is perceived as a paradise where peace, love, and harmony abide, and that that is uh, that is not just traditional. That that's a uh, that's a that is a perception. That's um, but. And and traditionally, uh, you know, God and Jesus are in heaven in this place they're talking about. And they're waiting, and God and Jesus are waiting for us to um to die and go and go to heaven. Okay. But what Jesus was teaching, heaven is not a place. It's not a physical place. Um, heaven is a spiritual realm, okay? And heaven is a state of mind where you allow yourself to experience your connection with your source um and, and th these are these are kind of standard definitions but but i just wanted to i just wanted to have them kind of standard for now and then we're going to talk about more and of course the kingdom of heaven and we we use it interchangeably in the bible the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god are the same thing and the kingdom of god is the the presence and counsel of God okay that is that is throughout the universe that and it is 
here on the earth right now. Okay, wait a minute, what happened? Hold on. Okay, so, so to fold to fold into this, this understanding is is what what is God, okay? And um, two things to understand God and maybe understand how and why Jesus has the the teachings of what he what he has. Okay, God is spirit. Now, we, all right, traditionally, uh, we know in Christianity, God to be a person, okay? Uh, there's three persons in the Trinity, okay? But God is not a person. And I'm not going to go into the, to the, the, the Trinity and all that, but but the understanding um, from I, I'm just going to say from the Aramaic translation of the Bible, and um, is that God is spirit. Okay, and so if God is spirit and God is spirit, then it accounts for the fact that we have learned even in traditional Christianity that God is everywhere. And I don't know about you people, but I really never could figure out how the person God could be everywhere. I never figured that out. I did question it when I was young, but um, so, so God is spirit. And so, and is present everywhere present or present everywhere, however you want to say it. And so both within us and outside of us throughout the universe. And it's kind of an important concept when we get to having some inspiration to do the teachings. And of course, we also learned that God is love. And God Starting with Jesus, now, I, and I had this discussion with somebody, and it wasn't you, George, but it was somebody else. Um, and, uh, oh, I know, I know what it was. They, okay, they, they have read the psalm, and, um, and it was like Psalm 30, I think, and it refers to uh, God's anger, okay? And so there was some discussion, but then, um, but then I said, look, the ang angry, wrathful God is in the Old Testament. That is That was the belief uh, in, in the Old Testament and whatnot. But Jesus came along here, okay? Jesus came along and taught us and taught, he was trying to teach the Jews, okay? So he taught us that God is a loving father, or parent, we can use parent. Um, and he unconditionally loves all of his children. In other words, all humankind are children of God. And, and regardless of race, sex, religion, okay, um, it's, and, and God's love is for everybody. Um, it, it's all inclusive. So I, I wanted I wanted to put these verses in here just to kind of go back um, and and review a little bit because some people have a problem saying, well, it doesn't really say God is love, um, you, you know, specifically, but um, God loves everybody and he is all inclusive. So Matthew 545. All right. Um, tells us. Okay, so that you can may become sons of your father who is in heaven, who causes his son to shine upon the good and the bad. 
and who pours down his rain upon the just and the unjust. Okay. And this just goes along with God is there for everybody. And, um, but when you go to uh, verse 48, um, and it says, therefore become perfect, just as your father in heaven is perfect. Okay. Now, Dr. Lamsa did not translate it um, as such, but that word perfect there means all inclusive. And it if you if you go back and you read, if you read those um, even go above 545 and you read there, and then when you get to verse 48, you will understand why it is that um, that it means all all inclusive. So this is just another thing, and uh, Dr. Lamsa did not um, translate the word there, but uh, it means all inclusive. So, um, so as we're looking as we're looking at um, Jesus teachings and and um, practicing those teachings. And, and kind of thinking, well, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if, if um, I, I, I don't know about those teachings and I don't know that, that, that God is there for me to, to help me practice these things. Um, anyway, um that is th th this is a, a meaning for this to be a background so that so that if you so that you might want to go to heaven now okay um and uh that that is the concept of 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 god and why you might would really want to go to heaven now or period okay so and, and so I just I just put these so we understand culturally who he was talking to back then, all right, and and the concept of God there back then, okay, they didn't know they didn't know what what we know now, and they you know God was mysterious but sacred, and and remember. The whole concept was one God, and it was always it was always that people going were going back to worship idols and 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 whatnot, turning away turning away from God. But so it was mysterious, but yet sacred, and there they there could be no no images or statues uh, of of God. Um, even though I mean they clearly understood that they couldn't see God, but uh, but it was real real strict about no no images and statues, and and we have to remember that that God and this is the same God, okay? It's it's God doesn't change and God didn't stop being wrathful or whatnot. It was a belief, and so the belief the belief was God was both. Good and wrathful. Wrathful. He was responsible for everything that happened, good and bad. So that kind of concept um, is what is what they were facing, and that's what you find in the Old Testament. But Jesus changed all of that, or let's say he tried to change it. Okay, and and of course you know what happened to Jesus. He you know the the uh, the Jewish authorities did not um, did not want him uh, uh, talking about this because he was challenging their position in life and their stature and all of that. So anyway, just to have a, a picture of that. So 
so we're going now we're, we're going to 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 the gospels that's just a little bit of background so maybe you can hang on to that as we go and study the the, the other teachings and and the beatitudes but when jesus jesus um you know he um he was baptized by john and he came up in the water and then he went and fasted for for 40 days and um so after that he was done fasting he had taken care of that he came out and this was really the start of his mission the start of his teachings uh from matthew 4 17. from that time jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of god is coming near now we okay when you when you think about repent um in in our traditional world today uh, repent is is a kind of uh contrition and a kind of uh, um there's a lot of a lot of carrying on and 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 um remorse and and all, all kinds of stuff that's that's the way we say because it's it's like um trying to get forgiveness for sins and whatnot but jesus wasn't dealing with sins and jesus never dealt with sins he never uh he never talked about sins a couple of times he said go your sins are forgiven but he did not focus on sin and you are a sinner and da 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 da, da. so um but so repent from Aramaic means to turn to God. All right. So he said, he said, and and we have the understanding that God is everywhere. Uh, God is here now. In this one, it's he's coming near. Uh, the other ones will say, uh, God is is the kingdom of heaven, or God is among us. And remember, I just said that the kingdom of heaven means the presence and the counsel of God. And so Jesus was trying to tell them. See, he told them, he told them that God was not the wrathful God. God was their father. And and he's telling them now that, you know, God is not this mysterious uh, uh, whatever, but God is, he, he clearly makes it spiritual, but um, but God is loving and God is their father. So when he, so repent, turn to God, he's basically telling the people, who, whoever they were, is I got, I got to find the right words here, is to, to turn, oh, okay, to tur turn back to God. And what, you know, what had happened is, all right, the Israel had become very, uh, it had expanded, uh, it had become prosperous, um, and even though the Romans had, were occupying it, um, Jerusalem was um, Jerusalem was doing very well. Okay, and um, and so so the people connected there. Okay, they were um, they were do, they were doing great, and um, they were making money off of the temple. Uh, they were taxing people big time. And um, so, so when he's saying to them, "Turn to God," basically, what he's saying is, "You got to, you got to turn it around." They were caught up in their prosperity and their materialism, and they forgot about God. Um, and so, I just wanted to kind of focus on this and the idea of turning, turning to God. And when you so. When you're turning to God, and we just have this, we have this 
understanding that God is everywhere. God is uh, uh, loving unconditionally, and God is available to everyone. He's all inclusive. Okay, and there's no, uh, there are no conditions. Um, you, you can turn to God, but it fell on deaf ears to the 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 wealthy and the authorities uh, because they believed they were fine, and and they you know they didn't want to hear it. Uh, on the other hand, the common people and especially the people from Galilee, um, they heard the message, they turned to God in their hearts and they and they got it, they got the message and they felt and, and they, you know, part of, part of this, I think is, is becoming aware of God's presence because even though it's there, it's all around us. And even though it's there, you have to kind of become aware of it. And and uh, that's what Jesus was trying to was trying to do. And uh, so enough to repent. Now, the Sermon on the Mount, and I will I will start this like Dr. Eric will starts it every time. The Sermon on the Mount was not a sermon, okay? It was the the Sermon on the Mount. It, it's it's written, but it's but it's pieces of all all of his uh, what whatever we we'll call them lectures or whatever. But it's pieces, and there was no just one solid Sermon on the Mount where Jesus stood there and did all these teachings. Okay, I had to say that because that's that's one of Doctor Erico's um, things. So, Jesus' mission was not to create a new religion, but to fulfill the laws of the Jewish religion spiritually. Okay? And because when he said, I came to fulfill the law, and that, that, that means, that is to bring the, the, the word characteristics here, I couldn't think of any other word, but it, it's okay. The spiritual character lifts lift he he wanted to put the put love and peace, understanding and forgiveness. Okay. He wanted to put that back into the laws and into the, the people and the people's hearts because th they had become so and so intent and wrapped up on the laws uh there was no you know there, there was no mercy there there uh there was basically no no justice um they were uh, they were heavily taxed they hated uh they hated the people in galilee and of course jesus was from galilee and so um and what so so what had happened is when you go back and you look at Abraham and and the covenant that that God made with Abraham, it was it, it was basically a spiritual uh, covenant, and the chosen people were to be were to be examples, were to be leaders for not just the Jews but for all generations uh, to come and um and so it starts out well with, with with Abraham but then okay it th then it all got married buried I'm sorry got buried because all right so you know we go and then when we get into um Moses and and the people in the desert and Moses, Moses made all these laws, and and he got the Ten Commandments, yes, but um, but then as he as he continued, uh, what was it, forty years he was in the desert uh, with, with the people, then he made all these laws about about uh, 
you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. And uh, eventually, okay, I mean, it, it carried over. Um, and so the laws, the laws were fine. They, they actually, some of the laws that we think are, are just kind of ridiculous and whatnot, they actually were needed when they were in the desert, okay? But, uh, but after that, and then as Israel uh, grew uh, and whatnot, the, um, the material stuff, uh, that, that's what I'm going to call it, the material stuff, um, people became uh, uh, entrenched in their, in their wealth and their pride and uh and and of course you know prejudice started occurring and whatnot and so by the time jesus came on the scene th this is what this is what it was all about and um and so they had pushed god aside basically and um and had had put all their, uh, you know, like, like, uh, begging money in the temple. Uh, uh, it, and the temple was a, the temple was a major economic force at that time. And, and, you know, they were, they, you know, they, they were okay with that. They, that group, particular group of people, they, they, they were okay with that. And seemingly they were happy and whatnot, but that's um you know but that that's that's where it was this is what it was like when jesus came on the scene and this is what he was trying to he was trying to make people aware of god's presence okay trying to tell them that god's not this this angry god and whatnot and that you <clears throat> you really need to put these spiritual values in your everyday uh, uh, living, your 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 govern your government, your uh, relationships and whatnot. And he said, you will be happier if you do that. So anyway, that's 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 what the scene was. And we don't ever want to forget that Jesus was from Galilee, and that was a big problem for Jesus when he was in Jerusalem. And that's that's a big part also of him getting crucified. Um, and so, so you had a world full of, well, full of money and and and, and pride and hate prejudice and Jesus was trying to change it all right and he never dreamt that he never dreamt that the Christian religion that we have today he he just I, I you know I don't know um, the expression that Jesus would turn over in his grave I believe if he <laughs> if he if he allowed himself to check out the Christian religion um, and the emphasis on sin and him dying for his sins. I just don't believe Jesus would, well, he'd just turn over in his grave, I guess. Anyway, so just wanted to put a background on this because now, because we're going to be bringing all this up, you know, to, to us um, today and and we are going to be moving to the the Beatitudes, um, and we're going to work off them. But there are for each Beatitude there are other um, scriptures in, in the Gospels. So we will be looking at those. And uh, but I wanted to I wanted to to just get this this concept of you know the beatitudes always start up with blessed are and so many people including dr erica and whatnot have, have quibbled over this word and what does it really mean and all of that so 
I've just I've just pulled out some some um, uh, definitions. They're, these are just standard definitions, not uh, so that we can get an idea of what it means to be blessed. Okay, so number one, okay, it means an inner peace, an inner bliss, an inner happiness, an inward joy that is not produced nor affected by circumstance. And this one, th this one, I, uh, I, I really, I, I really liked because, because, because of the the, the, the feelings in, in, involved and the feelings of inner peace and inner bliss, which, which essentially are the essence, the essence of God, really. Okay. And then being blessed is being filled with joy. People can and are blessed even when they have nothing of this world. Their joy is supplied by God. Um, and this is very interesting because the people, the, the common people that Jesus talked to in, and it was in Galilee mostly, okay, uh, they were very joyous at Jesus' words and they really, um, I mean, they really turned to God and accepted this, even though they had no money, they were oppressed, but but they felt that they felt that joy. And and that's the, that's a pretty important concept. Okay, so many believe being blessed is having money, no wants or needs. But a person can have no money and still have no worldly wants or needs if his joy is supplied by God. And this is not to say that you can't, that that um, that you won't be blessed if you are prosperous or and or rich. And uh, you'll remember you'll remember the stories about the, the the rich man and whatnot. It's not it's not the idea that that because you have all that money that that's not good. No, the, the idea behind that, the quote spiritual idea is that you don't share it with others, with those in need, whatever. And so, anyway, I just wanted to, uh, I, I just wanted to emphasize that because next week we are going to move on and we're going to start um, doing, doing uh, the Beatitudes. Uh, let me see what else I got here. Okay. So with the, the with the Beatitudes, Jesus begins to tell the people how the spiritual intent of the law could be fulfilled. Okay, and and now this is this is my thing because, like I say, the Beatitudes have been revisited and visited and more visited, but um, but but when I see it the way the way I see it, because he's already said, look, um. Repent, you know, and and turn to God. And now he's telling them how how can they um, they turn to God, and then how can they um, they enter and, and enter the, the the kingdom? And that's what we're going to be talking about too. How how can you do that? And of course, you 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 enter the the you entered the kingdom uh, by doing the teachings of Jesus. Now, remember the two commandments. Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor. And of course, how do you love God? You love your neighbor. So, um, so that becomes, that becomes a, a, I just call it a pathway uh, to, to, heaven whether it's heaven now or uh, the, the belief of when you die 
So anyway, try it. You will like it. In my mind, that is what he's saying to people. So, and each beatitude or teaching, if practiced, is a means of entering heaven. Now, so, unlike traditional Christianity, Jesus' pathway to heaven requires action on the part of each individual, not just worship and praise. Uh, because um, the only way that there is going to be peace and harmony in the world is it starts with individuals. Um, and I, I have this Jesus, okay, another another traditional Christianity thing is that Jesus, is coming back and Jesus will fix things. Okay. And that's, however, you think about this, Jesus. Okay. So Jesus comes back, but Jesus can't, Jesus is not going to fix our hearts and minds. Of course, unless we listen to him, but, uh, but we're relying you know, a large share of Christianity is relying on Jesus coming back. And, um, and well, I, I just heard a statement of, from, from um, Dr. Erico. And so I'm, I'm okay saying, Jesus, it's been more than 2000 years. Okay. And Jesus Jesus is not coming back. I mean, because if he came back, let's say now, back then he was talking to the Jews, the Jewish people. I mean, he'd come back now, he would be talking to the Christian people, right? And he would be sending the same spiritual message. And I doubt, I, I doubt that he would be uh, any more successful with that crowd, with this crowd today than he was back then. So anyway, Keep that all in mind because we're going to we're going to go. Okay, we're going to work with each beatitude and and the teachings that that go with them because they're the other teachings in the gospel. Uh, understanding what it meant back then, and then we're going to bring it forward to our world today, and and then and how we can practice those teachings, or you know, or maybe not. Maybe we don't want to, uh, or whatever, and start on the pathway to heaven now. Okay, now I just want to. So, all right, now people, um, I, I, I guess I, I, I guess I'll say the majority of people, Christian people, whatever, when when they when they, uh, we or they talk about Jesus teachings. Which, you know, Christianity doesn't focus a whole lot on the Gospels, but that's where that's where the message from Jesus is. But they will say, huh, those teachers are those teachings aren't practical for today. Um, you know, I mean, there's no way. And then and then they just just move on. And so I just thought we would do this. Um, and. Uh, I, I'm hoping that everybody will everybody will share once we once we get into each one, and that will be observant and uh, and and share the attitudes about these teachings and their applicable their the uh, our applicableness to uh, t today. Um, I I just. I just felt that, you know, I talk about it in, you know, Dr. Erica talks about it and people talk about it from the pulpit some, but there's more to it than just, you can talk about it, but when you, when you try to, when you fit it into our world today, um, then, then let's, let's see. And hopefully um, 
hopefully um, everyone will start sharing. Okay, so for next week, and like I say, we're going to use this book. Um, uh, I, I, I don't really want to make people go out and buy things, but I think each of you have the book. If you don't, let me know. And uh, th this is my prime group of people here. So you let me know if you don't have the book and I'll make sure you get it. Okay. Um, and and so, so the page nine through 18. And next week, we're going to talk about the poor and pride, the humble and humility in our world today. So what I hope to do is is uh, now starting next week. All right, we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the the poor and pride, and I've got some stories. And if you if you and if you have any stories or what, whether it's whether it's you know you yourself or whether um, you've read or you you heard or you know you observed. Um, save them because we need those to bring all this up to to today and the the poor and pride and humble is a really great subject i've already done some research and um it um it'll just be interesting i hope so and and i hope that um <laughs> i i just said here do you want to go to heaven now some people may not want to and that's okay and if you don't get you know you don't have to you don't have to agree or anything if you just say well look i think you know being humble or whatnot da, 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 you're welcome to more than welcome to say mm, uh -uh, that that's not just going to work and i think that's the only way that we can kind of bring this into reality um for now so okay i i i don't have um of course i always Appreciate your contributions. 